We've all seen those awe-inspiring cruise ships gliding across the horizon, or the military might of aircraft carriers. But today, we will discuss Shell Prelude, the undisputed heavyweight champion of anything ever built to float on water. Imagine a behemoth stretching a mind-blowing 1,601 feet, or 488 meters long, and 243 feet wide, 74 meters. That's nearly five football fields laid end to end. Picture it towering a staggering 344 feet or 105 meters tall, exceeding the height of the Statue of Liberty. Now to truly grasp its immense weight, the Shell Prelude, made of 260,000 tons of steel, displaces a jaw-dropping 660,000 tons when fully loaded. That's more than six Nimitz-class aircraft carriers stacked on top of each other. It isn't actually a ship in the traditional sense. It's a game changer known as a floating liquefied natural gas platform or FLNG platform. Think of it as a giant factory strategically placed right in the middle of the ocean. This marvel of engineering sucks up natural gas from the Earth's depths, then chills it down to a negative 162 degrees Celsius or negative 260 degrees Fahrenheit. But why so cold? This transforms the gas into liquefied natural gas, or LNG, making it much easier to transport. The Shell Prelude calls the Indian Ocean's not-so-commonly-named Cyclone Alley home. Nestled amidst the rich gas fields of Concerto, a whopping 124 miles or 200 kilometers off the coast of northwest Australia, this location is key. It provides easy access to the gas reserves while enabling efficient transportation of the liquefied product. Building this monstrosity in the middle of a cyclone zone? The Shell Prelude story began in 2012, taking shape in the massive Goji shipyard of South Korea. Over 5,000 people toiled away for more than a year, meticulously crafting the platform's hull. Think global Legos. Other gigantic components were built simultaneously around the globe. Finally, in 2017, after an estimated cost of $17.5 billion, this engineering marvel was complete and ready for its epic journey to Australia. The journey may have been smooth sailing, but the Shell Prelude's initial years were riddled with teething troubles. Leaks, electrical issues, fires, and even industrial action plagued the platform, leading to several shutdowns. It's ironic, considering the high-tech engineering designed to withstand the fury of Australian storms. Speaking of storms, here's where things get seriously impressive. The Shell Prelude is moored by a central, rotating turret connected by a whopping 16 steel piles driven deep into the seabed. Each pile is a behemoth in itself, measuring 235 feet long or 65 meters and 18 feet wide or 5.5 meters. To keep this beast anchored, nearly 25,000 links of ultra-strong chains connect the platform to these piles. Just eight of these chains are needed to keep the Prelude storm safe, with the remaining eight acting as extra security against even the crankiest krakens the ocean might unleash. The Shell Prelude is a powerhouse in its own right. It utilizes steam for power generation and compression, boasting seven of the biggest marine user boiler units ever built, each churning out a massive 220 tons of high temperature, high pressure steam per hour, enough to power a small city. And once the natural gas is liquefied, it's showtime. The Prelude uses three specialized in-field support vessels, or ISVs, to export the LNG. These workhorses are equipped with high-pressure, high-temperature dynamic risers. Fancy talk for super strong tubes, and they can withstand even the most extreme cyclonic events. Imagine a garden hose on steroids. These risers draw a mind-boggling 50 million liters of cold ocean water every hour to cool down the gas into a liquid state. While the Shell Prelude might look like a stationary giant, it does have some wiggle room. Three Rolls-Royce USL 455 azimuth thrusters, each packing a punch of 6,700 horsepower, are positioned at the rear. Think of them as gentle nudges. These electrically powered thrusters allow the platform to turn out of the wind and maneuver while loading LNG carriers. The Shell Prelude is a marvel of modern engineering, but the question remains, will it retain its crown as the biggest thing afloat forever? Back in 2013, when it was still just a glint in Shell's eye, the idea was that if the Prelude was an economic success, 
it would be just the first of many such mega platforms, harvesting gas from oceanic sources that were too distant or too tough to get at any other way. Fast forward to today, and things are a bit quieter on that front. 11 years on, no successor to the Prelude has yet been launched or even announced. Could the Shell Prelude stand alone to defend its record until the end of its active service? Only time will tell. Anyways, the Shell Prelude's journey has been an interesting one, riddled with challenges but also groundbreaking achievements. While its future as the undisputed king of the seas might be uncertain, it has undoubtedly paved the way for advancements in floating liquefied gas technology. As we move forward, it'll be interesting to see if future FLNG platforms will take inspiration from the Prelude's design, overcome its shortcomings, and pushing the boundaries of size and efficiency even further. Will there be a challenger to the throne? Only time and the ever-evolving world of ocean engineering will tell. The Shell Prelude is a testament to human ingenuity and our ability to push the boundaries of what's possible. It's a behemoth that stands as a symbol of human ambition and the relentless pursuit of innovation. So the next time you hear about a massive ship, remember the Shell Prelude, the unrivaled heavyweight champion, forever a king amongst the waves. Keep your eyes peeled on the Indian Ocean and the ever-evolving world of energy because the story of the Shell Prelude and the giants that may follow is only just beginning. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to Futuristic Tech and AI for more explorations into the wonders of engineering and innovation.